Good afternoon, everyone. In a video a few days ago, I talked about how to easily identify likely trending days before they actually set up. This method involved not having to read internals, not having to read the market breadth information, none of that. It was as simple as reading these trade chart bubbles that come on automatically whenever we have our conditions met, which suggest a likely trending day. Now today we had that set up in the NASDAQ futures, we had that set up in the crude oil futures, and we had that set up in the copper futures. So we had a trending up in copper, a trending down in crude, and a trending down in NASDAQ, which is what we're going to spend some time looking at today to see, well, did those trades actually work out or not? So if we start with the NASDAQ futures here, I can go ahead by maximizing this cell. And looking at the NASDAQ futures, we had our notification at 7 a.m. Pacific. So that's 30 minutes after the market opens that we should be expecting a trending market for the rest of the day. Now, there's two things or two ways that you can use this information. At the end of the day, it's just getting information, right? It's getting information before everyone else has it and then using that information to try and either manage your existing positions or take on some new one. So in the case of NASDAQ, once we had this trending down bubble, we still had an opportunity to enter at the clouds or better. And this is where I've talked about this many times, but if you are looking to try and participate on this downside, using options on the underlying is a lot more useful and a lot more productive, I would say, than trying to use the actual full size contract. Right, we need to be able to withstand heat going all the way up towards the edge of this hour's clouds, which would have told you that, hey, this is still where you normally be looking at shorting anyways. So while that didn't happen in this case, using the options gives you the flexibility to manage that trade in the event that it does. So I think that's where the options, or if your account can stand it, the micro futures start to become uh, some powerful ways that you can participate in this trade. Now, the second approach is, again, for all of you that have been long any sort of tech stocks for this entire period that the market's been going up, this is your indication to start to take your profits and to expect the market to have a likely reversal today, or at least a trending down day, which again suggests that after we've gone up for the X amount of days that we've been going up in a row, that today would be that breather day, not any sort of big correction, but the place in which if you were looking to try and optimize for some of your shorter term dated positions, this gave you the heads up to manage your positions. So. From our actual point of entry, the NASDAQ continued to drop another 1.75-ish percent before we then continued to chop around sideways. Now, if we zoom out and we see, well, what does tomorrow look like so far on the NASDAQ futures, our market pulse line is still a little bit below price action right now. So it wouldn't be all that surprising to see price action fall closer to that 9,800 level before we then start to again continue in that same bullish direction, uh, assuming nothing else changes. Now, if we move on to copper, We'll come back to a one minute chart here on copper. Now in the case of copper, we had a likely trending up bubble, but our actual point of entry once we got that sign was quite a ways away from the actual clouds. So for this trade to look interesting in terms of even participating with options or the actual contract, knowing that copper is a little less margin, I would have still wanted to see price action come at least back down towards the clouds, which gives me some sort of an edge, a better price entry than where we ended. Uh, and you can notice that after we did get this likely trending up bubble, we continued going up towards that next hour's volatility box, but that was pretty much it. You didn't get that much more of a move, especially with the way that we shot out outside. But you still did get that trending up market as a percentage basis from the outside of the clouds. We had uh, copper go up another 0.94%. But from where we actually got the signal, copper only went up about 0.69%. And so that's where, again, the rule set tries to keep you out of some of these trades, tries to give you an edge at the actual time of entry, uh, since that's what, in my opinion, is uh, most critical in trying to at least position yourself for whatever the day looks like. And then finally, with crude, that was the last market that gave us a likely trending up bubble, and that came towards 8 a.m. Pacific, so a little bit after when we saw the, the NASDAQ along with the copper bubbles, but at 8 a.m. Pacific, we still had an opportunity to enter towards the edge of the clouds. Now, crude at that point had already fallen down 3.92%, close to 4%, and so if that was a bit more of a difficult trade to try and take, especially knowing that we were a bit extended, that's where the NASDAQ still offered you that opportunity. Now, from the point of entry, again, if you just followed the rule set, you saw that crude still did continue to fall another 3%, from the clouds, from the place in which we knew to expect a likely trending down market before again, crude starts to reverse. Now with each of these breaks, that's our sign to switch on over to our more conservative volatility boxes. So, so if we were on the aggressive here, we would be switching on to the doomsday aggressive models, but the likely trending down bubble gives you a way to participate in these trending moves before they actually take place. Now again, the clear winner for today was very obviously the NASDAQ futures. We saw that with uh, the actual markets, both in the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell, but the NASDAQ was the only one that actually gave us this sort of sign, this sort of edge, this sort of heads up that we should be expecting a likely trending down market for the rest of the day. All right, hope this video helps to give you yet another example of how we can easily use these chart bubbles, not have to worry about things like reading internals, not having to see if we have a minus 1,000 tick or what the ADS beat or what the advanced decline spread looks like, none of that. 
Now, if you do have that knowledge, I will repeat one more time, you can start to layer that on to really start to have control over both the acceleration and the break for your trades. You know when you expect the market to start to go, you know when you expect the market to start to pull back, and you have multiple confluences and signals letting you know what you should expect for the rest of the day. All right, hope that helps. Good luck trading the rest of this week, and we'll see you in the next update. Take care, everyone.